Well, good morning and welcome to Friday's Pajama Preaching. From me sitting on my bed, in my bedroom, in my pajamas. And I wanted to just reflect a little bit on social loneliness. And we've all been through it now with the uh, the COVID lockdown and shutdown and releasing and going back again. And um, now following the transplant, the leaflet I had as when I was leaving spoke about COVID and self-isolation. And as a transplant patient, I now, or well, they strongly recommend that I self-isolate for 12 weeks following discharge of hospital. So I'm back to lockdown again, big time. In Genesis, it says it's not good for man to be alone. And all things in Genesis that have been named were approved of God to be very good. Loneliness is the first thing which God's eye named not good. John Milton wrote that in 1645 at a time when he was going through great personal loneliness. When you approach the book of Genesis, from a theological thinking, the profound truth of the message is that for humankind, loneliness hinders personal and communal flourishing. Think of the difficulties we're having with Zoom Church. Even though it's wonderful, we miss some of the communal social interaction. We see both in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 two different rich bountiful creations emerging in each of the stories but when it comes to humanity God declares that there's something missing and he says it's not good for man to be alone and God wants to make a helper for man Genesis 2 verse 18 And that notion of community and fellowship is disclosed when God says in chapter 1, let's make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Therefore, we believe that we are made in the image of God and we must recognise the importance of that inbuilt need for fellowship with one another in order to thrive. So the deep truth in the story of Adam and Eve illustrates that God intends for us to share our lives with others and the value of personal relationship in God's eyes is emphasised by the amount of space devoted to them and to the fellowship in scripture. We've got an innate desire built into our DNA to be loved and to belong as full members of society and loneliness denies people this intrinsic human need. And the Gospels are full of stories of hospitality, fundamental feature of Judaism. And there are many examples too of Jesus overstepping the conventions of the day to engage and minister to those on the margins of society, to bring them back into fellowship with their communities. You think of Luke 5 verses 12 to 16, the man with leprosy. Or John 4 verses 5 to 42, the woman at the well. Or Luke 7, 11 to 17, the widow of Nain. Mark 5, verses 1 to 20, Jesus healing the, the demon-possessed man. Luke 19, 1 to 10, Jesus meets with Zacchaeus. And Matthew 12, 9 to 14, Jesus heals the man on the Sabbath. And even when Jesus is hanging on the cross, there's a recognition of a deep human need that must be met. John 19 says this, that when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his own home. So at the foot of the cross, we find a new spiritual family being formed, a new means of belonging 
Jesus demonstrates that as members of a transformed community, we are to incorporate new relationships with each other and become, as a family, a caring one, one that supports one another. The early church set its heart on the duty of care for the poor and the marginalised. Such was the importance of that ministry that in Acts 6, seven people were appointed to focus their attention on caring for and transforming the plight of widows. Widows probably can be seen today as those who are marginalised or those that are having a difficult time. And this characteristic of the early church is the pattern of Jesus' manifesto set out in Luke 4. What does he say? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. For those who are oppressed, with this time now of looking at Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, focusing on different groups that are being persecuted, are being overlooked, stepped over. Jesus says to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And C.S. Lewis wrote, I'm convinced that there is no experience or emotion that more closely resembles hell than loneliness. And so during this this COVID lockdown and this de-locking down time. Give a thought for those people who have actually not been out for nearly a year or over a year. And what about those that are locked down all the while? Before COVID, people couldn't get out. People were shut into their own homes, looking out of the window, and maybe the postman was one of the only contacts that they had. And Jesus gives us a nudge in Matthew 25 where he says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So he gives us a real strong challenge that, yes, we look into ourselves and go, oh dear me, this is tough times. But look outside. Look beyond your own situation reach out with love and care to somebody else and of course at the moment socially distanced so are we ready to see Christ in those that we meet and to keep watch with them to stand and stare at the stars with somebody else just to share in a smile and even when you're wearing the mask you can still smile because your eyes squint a bit Anyway, God bless you and keep you safe. And may loneliness be dispelled and replaced by God's spirit of love and peace and joy today and all the days of your life. Amen.